Hello and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we are going to be unboxing, installing and uh, reviewing a set of intercoms for installing on motorbike helmets. In our case we're ATVers uh, so it's going to be used in ATV type environments, uh, dust, water, mud, stuff like that. And we're going to be installing them on a couple of helmets. This one's the one my daughter uses. It's a Raider helmet. Um, you know, nothing overly fancy about it. And this is the one I use. It is a Fuel MX-4 helmet. Um, I got a couple of GoPro mounts on it already. Um, and that's about it. So we are going to dive into, into this set. Uh, I picked it up off of Amazon. Uh, regular price is $219.99, so $220 bucks for a dual pack. So you get two. Um, and then when I ordered, they just happen to have a uh, coupon, one of those just, you know, click here, checkbox things for a coupon for $22 off. So it worked out to 198 Canadian. Obviously US, it'd be less than that. Uh, and depending on wherever you are in the, in the world, it, your prices will vary. Um, these are made by Lexan. They're uh, the B4FM model. Uh, they use Bluetooth 5.0 and they got an intercom function on them. They also do uh, a number of other things, but I primarily bought them for the intercom option so that uh, me and my daughter can talk a lot easier together while we're riding. Uh, I don't have to constantly be looking back to make sure she's coming okay, whatever. Um, she'll uh, be able to tell me hey something's wrong with my bike or yell if she rolls or whatever but you know what i mean and then we can decide well if we want to go left or right whatever as well without having to yell over our helmets and the bikes um so it's uh lexan two pieces b4 fm uh 10 riders version 5.0 motorcycle bluetooth headset with music sharing Motorcycle helmet, Bluetooth intercom with noise cancellation, uh, universal communication system for snowmobile slash ATV and made in China and new. Um, so they do say that these will connect up to four uh, systems um, or, or sorry, up to 10 systems, not four uh all together. So you can actually have a fairly large group of riders with you and and uh, be able to communicate uh, together. I won't be testing out the capabilities of uh, connecting to multiple units as we only have the two. And uh, nobody else I ride with right now has any, but maybe this will get them getting them and then I can do a further review after that. Um, other than that, the box is fairly, you know, it's not bad looking packaging here. Uh, it says 10 rider conference, uh, music sharing, uh, uses uh, type C uh, for charging, quick charge. So even says quick charge, we'll see how that is. And it's water resistance. Uh, of what I read on the ad, uh, advertisement for selling them, is it's IP67, I believe it is. Um, and then on the back here, it just tells you your buttons. You got uh, the intercom button, which is the X here. Up button for, uh, I think it'll do like volume up, um, uh, what do you call it, next song, stuff like that. Uh, down button, so obviously audio down and it doubles as other buttons. Uh, the power button, it's got Type-C headset port. And then on the bottom here, the Type-C uh, charging port. Um, it's got a 15 hour battery life. Uh, it does work with Siri and S voice. Uh, so you can, you know, communicate with your phone and make hands free phone calls, stuff like that. Um, that's, I, I think that's, you know, it's not really going to be utilized on an ATV, but if you're riding street bike, definitely I would, that would be handy. Uh, it's got noise cancellation. Uh, it says it's got 1.2 mile uh, intercom range. Uh, I think that's supposed to uh, uh, equal out to about uh, 2,000 meters, two kilometers. 
Uh, but the actual uh, real world is, uh, I think, is going to be much closer to about 50 meters line of sight. And, of course, is going to go down even further than that, uh, depending on if you have terrain, trees, stuff like that uh, between you. Uh, me and my daughter, we always keep the line of sight on each other anyways. So even 50 meters is going to be more than enough. Um, or f not 50 meters, sorry, 500 meters is what I was seeing uh, other reviewers saying. So it scratched the 50 meters, 500 meters, which again is uh, way more than what we need. You know, we're never more than that. We're, we're never going to break a half kilometer between us. So uh, again, water resistant, 10 rider conference, music sharing. Uh, it says it's got 3.6 or 30, no, 36 millimeter HD speaker. Uh, we'll see how good those speakers sound uh, and then type C quick charge again All right, that's it for the box and the ads. We'll see what else what we actually get in here So you open up the box you get the two units right off the hop now They are plastic For what they are they they feel all right for weight wise um, Let's see here you know, they look like they're pretty good construction. The ports have uh, rubber jackets for them. Um, so there's your charging port. It's a nice, good, solid rubber jacket to keep the water out of there. This is your microphone port. And that'll keep a lot of water and mud out of there. Uh, and the buttons are rubber coated. And they got uh, they got a really nice click to them, really nice feel to them. That's nice. And then you got two LED lights down here. All right, so we'll pull the two units out. The other unit is obviously the exact same. And then pull this up, and here's the goodies. Um, so here is the mounting brackets. If you use the clip option, it does look like this has two mounting options for the main unit on your helmet. You can either clip it on your helmet. And so this part would be on the outside like that. And then uh, a thinner wire part you would put in underneath your padding on your helmet. And uh, it screws on, they screw together. And that would clip it in. And so you got Two of those and oh here's the back side to those uh to the clips so that's the part that would go inside your helmet so there's one of those and here's the other one two of those you get a lot of a lot of stuff in here and then here is this one you can just glue onto your helmet it gives you 3m tape vhb tape and you actually just glue it on. Now that's actually much smaller if you're ever gonna ride without the unit on your helmet and whatnot. You want your mount to, to be uh, very subtle, not noticeable. You might just choose to go that way and just glue it onto the side of your helmet and uh, go with that. That's not bad. At least it gives you the option in case uh, the clip part won't work with your helmet or if you prefer to have the, the glue on style and then two bags of everything else your microphones whatnot we'll just set one bag aside because they're both the same and we'll dig into the other one and then you got a how to uh user guide manual for it looks like uh comes in english uh de oh man am i horrible french uh i think that's spanish and italian uh de denmark uh, so German, maybe? I wanna say German, I don't know. Uh, let me know in the, in the comments, uh, but yeah, I'm not 100% sure on that. But manual, looks like it's, like let's get to the part where I'd actually understand what I'm looking at here. That is, so that really, uh, I don't know German, but that really kind of looks to me like it would be German. I don't know. But okay, here's the English side. And, you know, it's got some good pictures. It's looks like it's got everything you need to figure out how to install it. 
mount it and run it. So that's cool. All right, let me get rid of this box and move the helmet out of the way. And let's see what's in one of these big bags. Okay, you got your USB-C to USB-A charge cord. Uh, you got your speakers, which, well, they feel okay. They're nicely padded, so if they're pressing on your ear a little bit, that would help. 3M tape, stick them into your helmet. Looks all right. Then you got a, uh, a sticky mic. So in ours, like we're closed face helmets, uh, we're gonna use these and we're just gonna stick them onto the inside of the helmet. Um, and if you have an open face helmet or I don't know, you just want to use a boom mic, it comes with a boom mic and boom mic mount that again glues into your helmet. So you could have that coming out of your helmet and it's very, uh, yeah, very flexible so you can position it nicely. And it's got a foam uh, windsock on it. So, and yeah, that's kind of neat. Okay. And then USB C for your connection to the head unit and here's just the little plug right here for your mic so we can get rid of the boom mic and plug in the little sticky mic if I can do this with my am I trying to install it wrong or plug it in wrong backwards oh, that'd be right there you go. So, so then that's just your mic. Stick it in there. Excellent. That is actually hook and eye Velcro. So, if the chin part of your helmet actually has a fabric in there, you wouldn't even have to use this sticky. This side has the hooks. It would probably just stick right to that helmet. And it, actually, yeah, probably would. But otherwise, you stick this in. This is the, uh, the fabric-y part of the Velcro. And then stick it down. That's up. All right, let's get into installing this. Okay, so we are going to get installing this. We are going to use the uh the uh bracket style not the glue on one or the clamp i guess bracket not the glue on so in the packaging here for it it gives you i thought maybe that was i don't know if that's metal Ah, that actually might be metal. That is metallic. I thought it was going to be plastic. Um, so they give you the bracket that goes in your helmet. And it comes with a rubber pad right here. They do give you an additional rubber pad that you can put down here if your helmet requires it. And another one that you can put uh say up here you know if your helmet requires it as well depending on how thick the shell is of your helmet to basically just to make it work for almost any style of helmet you can find so they give you a couple extra rubber pads we're going to try it with out for now and see how that goes and then also depending on how thick your helmet is they give you a plastic spacer that you would place uh, like this right here and it fits over a bit of a lip and stays in place quite well so if you have a exceptionally thick shell you could also use that to uh, generate some more space oh, throw that on the floor 
if you look here, you can actually see the lip uh, all the way around of the same shape that that kind of just clips onto. Doesn't, well, press fits on, pressure fits. And then inside the package here, you get uh, four screws, two shorter ones, two longer ones. Longer ones are four if you're using that plastic spacer. And then you get a release tool, which is basically when you put the head unit onto the bracket here. One second, we'll get this bracket out. Okay, when you put the head unit onto this bracket, this clip is spring-loaded to help hold the, uh, the head unit on so it doesn't just fall off. And so this, you slide in behind the head unit and it basically will push down this spring-loaded clip and then you can slide your head unit off the bracket. It's a, it's a nice secure way for it to fit and looks like it catches on this little lip right here at the back. So, nice. And then it also has a set of tracks here, obviously, that, uh, that coincide with the spaces on here to uh, guide it down into the proper place. So it has a nice rubber backing on it as well, so that's pretty nice. I really like the build of this. It's, uh, I'm rather impressed. It's got a nice rubber backing here too for where it's gonna uh, sandwich up against your helmet. So that's really nice. Really do like it. I don't know how much more I can say of that, man. Like it's, it's actually a really nice unit. So now I'm basically gonna decide, well, where, where would we want this to actually come inside or reside, I guess, on this helmet? Well, we can get it in between right there. So I think that's a good place. I might want to put that extra rubber piece on there. I think so. I think I want to put that extra rubber piece on, on this position right here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll get this uh, in place fit that in there oh yeah that's better just kind of holds that back a wee bit I think we'll get a much better clamp uh, by doing that and then this has some nice metal inserts in there so you're not threading into just plastic they actually got metal inserts in there so that's nice to have so we're gonna get this screwed down into place and uh, and see how it's gonna fit Okay, so that's screwed down nicely now. And uh, let's see how it is here. Oh, it moves. All right, let's see if we can get a little more effort into that. Or I might have to put on the third rubber pad. I don't want to crank this down too hard. It is nice that they provide the Allen key to go with it and that they use a nice Allen head screw as well. Yeah, it's actually moving pretty easy. All right, I think we're gonna put in that, uh, that third uh, rubber piece down on the bottom here, I think, and just squeeze that shell a little harder. Okay, so putting in the extra rubber definitely helped. That is much more secure, much more in place, or much better in place there. And uh, you know, that's the way it's gonna look on the helmet. Now we can actually take a head unit and put it on and basically just line that up. Try to make sure we're still in frame here. Yeah. All right, that's trying to be all gentle with it. It actually needs to be pushed in kind of hard to because of that spring-loaded clip and the rubber 
gasket but yeah yeah you got to put it in there pretty good the rubber gasket really kind of holds the gasket that was going around that clip and then the spring loaded clip that actually clicks it into place and that is how it looks on the helmet really suits this helmet nicely because the color schemes you know basically the same um well in fact exactly it's red blue and black so or red it's white blue and black so uh you know it fits really nice it looks good the guy really had a push on that and that clip did not move now like i say they do provide this the stick on style but even uh, in reading the manual is um, Lexan does not recommend you use that and they have a little blurb in there saying uh, use at your own risk basically um, they don't seem to not feel that it's as secure as using this clip which yeah I could kind of agree on that like that 3M tape's pretty good but you know this is an actual mechanical mount so I think it's going to be better so now what we do from here is we take uh take out the inside padding and we mount the speakers in the microphone so let's get on to that all right that took out that now this helmet it's got a internal liner and then some styrofoam. And you kind of want those speakers in where your ears are going to be. You normally put them in your ear reliefs. So I'm going to see where my ears fall into on this helmet. All right. So my ears basically like to sit pretty much right where the chin straps mount. And the ear relief is, even with the chin pads in place, is just above the uh, chin strap uh, mounting point here. So I think that's where we're gonna put those speakers is right in there. So simple enough. Let's uh, re-disconnect the button microphone. Don't need that just yet. And we will take the speaker wires here now there's a, two wires there is a short one and a long one short one goes to the left side now the left side being that chances are that's where you're going to want to mount the head unit uh, just because generally your throttle is going to be on your right side for me I'm still going to mount on the left side, even though my throttle's on the left, because either way, if I have to hit one of the buttons, I got to take my hand off the throttle. Really doesn't matter. And my only remaining hand is my left, so it'll be easier to hit the buttons if it's on the left side of my helmet or as opposed to it being on the right side of my helmet. Um, but obviously, if you decide for whatever reason that you want to have the head unit on the right side of your helmet, Maybe for some reason your throttle's on the left. Um, I don't know if any countries actually do that or not. But uh, then you will want to obviously adjust that and put the speaker with the longer wire on the opposite side of the helmet of the head unit. Um, and they say that will also increase the range of uh, the radio because this will um, actually pick up FM uh, radio stations over the air so I'm assuming it's using the speaker wire as a antenna at the same time so interesting but is how they designed it so that's kind of cool so we're gonna mount this and then we have to run the wires in behind the padding to hide it and uh, basically just stick them down with the 3M. This is also uh, Velcro. So you got the fabric side on the 3M tape side and the hooks on the speaker side. 
So you may even also is if you happen to have material like cloth that the hooks would be able to hook to right at your ears, um, you wouldn't even have to use the 3M tapes. Just uh, Velcro these right to the inside of your helmet. I guess would be a possibility, an option. Um, in my helmets, I don't believe that it's going to be, so we're going to be using the sticky Velcro. All right, so we're just going. I'm going to figure this out and put these in, and be right back. Okay, so we got these installed in here now. Let's see if you can see that. I had to so that they wouldn't interfere with the chin strap. Where's my phone? Uh, seriously, what do I do with my phone? All right, just so that they wouldn't interfere with the chin strap, I had to shove them just slightly underneath the styrofoam uh, down there. But you can see it doesn't interfere with the chin strap. It doesn't do it on this side or on this side. They fit in there quite nice. They, uh, yeah, they work quite well. Now, if you find like this helmet, it's got a pretty deep uh, ear well, right? Because of that foam in there that's for the padding. They do provide in another bag here that I didn't open earlier. Oh, see here. They did provide some standoffs. Basically, they got, they're just Velcro. They got hooks on one side, um, felt on the other side. And so you just pull the speaker off stick these down stick the speaker to these and it'll move the speaker closer to your ear so if you are finding that you have you know the speaker's a little too far from your ear you have a deep ear well like this helmet does this might improve the sound quality and uh lessen the need for you to have full volume all the time um in there they also provided some uh, some more stickies as well so i guess if you screw up or if these stickies get uh the ones that you currently put down or are not uh, working anymore or whatever here's some more I think that's what they're for anyways and they give you another if you happen to be using the boom mic they give you a another option here for uh, providing some extra uh, strength or holding power for the boom mic if you need if you find you need it or if your current boom mic holder is just not working out anymore they provide, uh, they, you know, they provide quite a bit of extra stuff, right? So, as you can see, the speakers are in. This one, the wires running in behind the padding, goes all the way around. This one here, the wire goes in, in behind this padding, and then I just basically tucked it all in between the shell and and the first layer of pad, um, right there. And, uh, and then it, it plugs in, and then here's our mic. I'm gonna run the mic next, and uh, we'll glue it up to, uh, at the chin mount here. Um, right up in, uh, probably right here, actually. I'm thinking it'll probably work best on this helmet right here. So I'll, uh, I'll get that going, be right back. Okay, and so for the final part here is the mic install see that right there so I just glued it down just off the center of uh, of the mouthpiece here ran the wire just underneath a bit of the velcro that holds the cheek pad and then over top of this pad and in with all the other wires and like look how slick of an install that is uh, you don't even really see the speakers unless you're looking for them the mic is held in place exceptionally well and the wires are all nicely tucked and like look the way that looks on the side of the helmet that is nice buttons are nice and big easy to touch um i think they'd even be good with uh, at least a lighter set of, of gloves on um they got really good positive uh clicks on them um, really good positive clicks and there's definitely spaced well enough apart that you're not going to mistake buttons um, 
for you know buttons that they're not type thing right um that is pretty nice and then yeah, up here you can see like there's a space right there but that is intended for this so you can push that down in there and it pushes in that clip and then that easily pops off just like that so if you wanted to you know unplug it bring it into the house while you leave your helmets i don't know wherever and uh in storage and you can take it into the house and charge it up so instead of leaving it on your helmet or you know if you happen to be leaving your helmet in the vehicle while you're at a destination or something man that clicks into place really good too so like that is not definitely not going to go anywhere it's not bouncing off as you ride or anything like that so that is awesome i really like it i am going to install the other one on my other helmet and then we'll give uh we'll run through some of the buttons uh as to what they do stuff like that so i'll be right back okay so no matter what i try with this helmet i can't get a good fit with the clamp mount um on this helmet like i did with the raider helmet uh i can squeeze this in here and behind this padding now this is additional cheek padding i have the standard uh cheek padding that uses three snaps it goes in then there's this bit of padding and then there's the shell this bit of padding is actually glued into place it's glued into the shell it's not really meant to be removable um but i pulled it away a little bit right here and uh, I can get that clamp in there. Problem is, so there's a, like a rubber seal around the bottom of this helmet. Um, I just, I can't get, no matter what combination of things I try, I cannot get this to clamp well here. Um, it clamps pretty well right here, but I think because of this rubber gasket, rubber seal here, um, I can't get a good clamp on the bottom, so it wants to slide off and it slides off fairly easily. Like, it's not super easy. It's not like you're going to, you know, shake the helmet or something and it's randomly just going to pop right off, but it does slide off easier than I like. It is nowhere near as secure as with the Raider helmet. And so then I tried, well, let's just clamp the entire thing, the cheek pad, the shell, everything all in one, and use the spacer. Um, problem with that is, is the two pieces from the front and the back of the, of the clamp mount, they don't mesh together well. And so it puts like weird force on the screw holes. Now, the back side of the clamp is metal that's metallic this is plastic and so i'm worried that it's going to put like a instead of just a straight pulling force on these screw holes it's putting a like a bending force on it and it's going to end up breaking it i don't like that and i tried that up here where it's got like the thicker rubber for the chain guard um, on this helmet um, i tried it up there and it basically does the same thing. I, I just, it, I don't like it. It looks like it's just not gonna work out. So what I've decided to do is I got some 3M double-sided VHB tape, very high bond tape. Um, it's off of a roll like this that I just happen to have laying around. And in the very center of these, uh, so it's got rubber going all the way around to contact the helmet, but in the very center is plastic and has the X logo on it for the uh, uh, Lexan logo, I guess, whatever. Um, and so I stuck it to there and it seems to have right about the same thickness as the rubber backing. Uh, so it should contact the, the helmet shell quite well. And then I'm going to use the clamp still as well. And between the clamp and that VH tape, I should hold it on there 
exceptionally well. Like it's gonna hold it on very well. And I don't care that I'm putting VHB tape on this helmet. This helmet's old. It's, uh, you know, I've had it for a number of years. It's been abused. Um, so honestly, by time I may ever wanna take that off, I'm probably gonna need another helmet anyways. And I'm probably only ever gonna take it off because I wanna move it to another helmet. So who cares? Who cares if it wrecks the helmet or anything like that? I'm just gonna go ahead with that and, uh, and we'll see how that works out. Um, I'll come back after I get that done and uh, let you know how it did. So I put it on with the VHB tape. I did clean the helmet first with a Lysol wipe and then dried it. And, uh, and then it's clamped in behind just like that and no spacer here and like it looks good and honestly with the uh 3m tape uh i probably didn't even need the clamp like it was gonna hold that on there really well already um but now with the clamp in there it is like it's solid it's not that's never moving it's never moving i could probably you know roll this roll the bike down the mountain and have it drag me with it and probably it'd still be that mount would still be there so i think that's going to work good and uh i'll get into doing the rest of the install on this helmet and let you know if i run into any other unique issues that i didn't run into with the raider okay on this helmet like it's a nice clean install it looks good um you can't even really even see the speakers in there uh, because there was some uh, felt, or not felt, uh, I don't know, it's light liner stuff. Um, so I had to go in behind that liner stuff. Um, I, get, I think it's a light felt. Um, I had to go in behind it because obviously sticking the speakers to that just wasn't going to do all that good, right? Um, it's all loose and stuff. So I stuck it in behind, put the felt back over top of it. That's on both sides the same way. Um, works really well. This helmet is uh, tighter. Uh, the mouth guard is much closer to my mouth than on the Raider helmet. Um, it's got a lot more padding in here. And so I had to be a little bit more picky with the mic placement. Um, I actually lifted it. I'm hoping that doesn't wreck the glue on the tape, but if it does, I got the 3M tape sitting here, so I can always remove it. But um, you can kind of almost see the shadow of where it was. It was down here, and when I tried the helmet on, it was rubbing between my chin and my lower lip, which with having a little bit of whisker, um, it was definitely making uh, like a crackle sound on the foam, which I'm sure would probably translate into the, uh, into the microphone and be annoying as he ever for my daughter, uh, or anybody else that's on the other side of the comms. Uh, so I moved it up a bit more. It's pretty much right in front of my lips. My lips do kind of touch it, but not bad. Um, I couldn't move it right into the front. Uh, I wouldn't do it anyways because that's actually a full-on air vent right in the very front and that might create too much wind noise. But also because I run the chin mount GoPro mount, um, that kind of forced my hand for having it right here instead of maybe having it just a little bit farther into the center. But being that it's like it is touching my lips, um, so it should pick up my voice very well. And I doubt this light felt here, um, see on the other side here with the speaker, uh, I doubt that light felt's really gonna impact the speaker volume all that badly or anything like that, or the quality of the sound. So I think it'll be fine there. And the mount is, yeah, fantastic with that bit of 3M tape on there. Um, that might be something you just wanna do anyways, no matter what, but, cause like, holy crap, did that ever make that a very solid mount? And uh, yeah, it looks awesome. Uh, obviously the color scheme doesn't work quite as well with this helmet as it does with the Raider helmet. Um, Cause that basically looks like it was made for this Raider helmet. Um, but uh, I don't know, I like it. It looks good and it's gonna help us communicate better while riding. So um, I will 
go through the some of the settings and how to pair them up and then uh, my daughter and I well the whole family we're going to go do a camping trip here of uh, which we're going to be doing a fair bit of quadding we'll give these a good fair shake uh, out on the trails and I'll finish out this video with a basic uh, review of uh, my thoughts on them so Okay, so uh, these units are working great on my helmets. I've paired them together. I haven't paired to my phone yet, um, but they're working great. Um, as far as I can tell, you know, just sitting here, here messing with them. I'm not gonna go through the entire manual and try to teach everything that's in here because these things do a lot. Um, this video would be forever long and honestly, you're never going to go back through this video a hundred times to try to remember stuff all the time. Keep your manual handy. There are things that you do have to do every time you want to use them if you are using them in certain ways. One is if you're using uh, connecting five or more devices, um, you actually have to change a setting on them and you have to do it every time that's not saved in memory. So uh, that's something you're gonna wanna keep the manual for so that you can remember how to do that. Um, the basics, the basics of it is, is to turn them on right here. You have your power button here and you have the X button here, right there and right there. Press and hold those for a couple of seconds, five I think you said. It'll say powered on and then Every time it will also tell you the status of the battery. Like right now, it just told me 100% on the battery. Now, as far as that's concerned, well, and then the light will sit there and flash blue, okay? Now, as far as that's concerned, the battery reporting, it's not accurate. Um, in the manual, it says it will report basically one of five different options. 100%, 80%, 50%, 30%, and low. Um, when the battery hits 30%, it will give you a warning, and uh, it'll give you that warning every five minutes. Now, they say that's a roughly one to one and a half hours of usage left still, but once the battery hits 20%, the unit will shut down. So the batteries do not go right to zero anyways. They drop to 20% and then they shut down and from that 20 percent shutdown point they say it takes roughly three hours to recharge back to 100 percent um now so this unit is flashing a blue light it is basically it's sitting in standby mode right now um i will turn this unit on doing the same thing just uh press the two buttons and let's see if you can hear it Battery 100%. All right, we'll see if you can hear that. It said battery 100%. This one is now um, flashing a blue light. Uh, if you want to get into intercom mode on either one of the units, they're already paired. Um, so let's, let's do the pairing procedure, I guess. Uh, so once it's on like this, you would hold the x button let me make sure of that uh um phone calls um yeah you would hold the x button for about one second and you will see the lights change you will see a red and blue light flashing um at the same time, you do that on the other unit, it will say, or it'll show the red and blue light flashing at the same time. And then on either unit, you just hit the X button once. Don't hold it, just press it release. And it will say searching. And basically what it's doing is searching for the other unit. They'll connect, it'll tell you. And then what you'll have is the red and blue uh let's see here the blue light will just flash i think i still 
uh, because they're going to stay in uh, uh, they're going to stay in standby mode. Once they're in standby mode, like they are now, and they're paired. So if you can see this, let's turn my screen back on here. So if you can see this, both units are just a single flashing blue light, right? On either unit, if you want to enter intercom mode, just uh, push the X button again uh, once. And what you'll see is they will start flashing the red and the blue light together. And that is what's happening on both of these helmets. And now you're in intercom mode. So either person can talk and the other person will hear. It is uh, a duplex uh, communication. So uh, you can both talk and both hear at the same time. And it seems to be working pretty good. All right, so that is your intercom mode. And then to exit intercom mode, again, e any unit can initiate this. Uh, you just push the X again, and the units will drop out of intercom mode and go back into standby mode. And, uh, and then again, any unit can uh, initiate the intercom mode yet again. Or am I wrong? Maybe it's power? Okay, never mind. <laughs> to exit intercom mode, ignore what I said. It's push the power button to exit intercom mode. So X to enter, power to exit. All right. Uh, a couple other things that I found interesting. Uh, it can pair to two devices or up to two devices at a time. Um, so you can pair to your phone and then you can pair to one other unit uh, if you are just riding uh, the two of you, uh, two people. You can still use intercom mode, you can still use phone mode, you can share music, all that stuff. Now, if you're starting to go into three people, four people, you can still communicate, do all that. Uh, as far as I can tell, it will work. Um, because it has four-way communication. Let's see here. Um, I'll have to test that for sure to make sure that that's exactly how that works. Now, if you are going past four people, so you're going up to five, uh, or as they call multi-way group intercommunication uh, or intercom, then basically what you're doing is you're pairing the units together individually. So you'll pair unit one to unit two, unit two to unit three, unit three to unit four, unit four to unit five, uh, because you can because you can pair with two devices at a time. So by me pairing to one, or like by pairing one to two, and then two to three, two is pairing with one and three so that's it that's all compare with um and then three is going to pair with two and four and then and so on down the line and then basically uh what it looks like they're they are going to do is they'll daisy chain their communication um so in order to get the max range on this my assumption is is you're gonna kind of want to figure out what order, like say, say you got ten people, and you're all on street bikes, and you're gonna be doing a, a you know a giant tour down the highway. You want to figure out what order people are gonna be riding in, and then pair your devices in that order, right? So you don't want the person in in the front. So call them unit one, pairing with the person in the back, call them unit, unit 10, because as your group spreads out just naturally, you might end up out of range. But if one is paired to two, two is paired to three, three is paired to four, each one of those, right? So one could be 500 meters away from two, two could be 500 meters away from three, three could be 500 meters away from four, and you're, 
the chain of communication would would maintain right um so you would actually get optimal distance uh, out of your uh out of your communication systems uh that way um other than that that's about as far as i've gotten and like I say it does a lot um as far as pairing to your phone doing phone calls stuff like that um it does have an option to have a auto answer you can enable it and disable or disable it on these units um, and if you have the auto answer enabled, it will uh, automatically answer a phone call, an incoming call in uh, at 12 seconds. Um, otherwise, you can push a button and manually answer that call, or you can double tap. Uh, I think it's the power button, but don't quote me on that. And uh, it will automatically decline that call. Uh, you can also use uh, one of the buttons to... Um, redial the last number so call back the last number um so you just double tap it or single tap it i'm not sure i'm not even sure which button it is and it will call back or uh yeah call back the last number um that you uh called out on um yeah other than that uh it'll also pick up fm radio stations i haven't looked into that how, how you set that up at all um yeah i don't know they they seem pretty nice little bit that I've listened to and they, uh, the speakers sound good. Um, we'll find out on the weekend here as to just how good they are and how good the microphones are, uh, as well as the noise cancellation, you know, because we're going to have wind blowing through past us as we're flying down the trails. We're going to have uh, all kinds of water splashing. We're going to have the, the motors uh, rumbling in the backgrounds, all that. We'll see how good we can communicate. Um, with all that noise going on. Uh, and then there's also uh, the factor of just trees and stuff like that. Now, the nice thing is with the exception, uh, I guess sometimes we actually do ride under, under high tension lines um, that we're gonna have to pay attention to. Uh, maybe that'll create some, some, you know, some electrical magnetic interference uh or maybe it won't i don't know um yeah we'll see how it all goes all right stay tuned and see how that uh and watch for that video